Um, hey guys, I'm gonna show you, um, I'm gonna read stuff because I can't like commentary over the freaking game, so I'm just gonna read stuff out of the freaking website about like facts and stuff, Crit criticizing and failed potential. Sonic 3D Blast received mostly negative response from critics and fans alike, mainly because the game had messy controls and dull and respectiveness of gameplay and the loss of Sonic speed. Sonic's movement was very slippery because of the use of the D-pad on the Genesis controller. The gamepad had the same premise with each level, destroying enemies, saving flick flickies, and progressing to the next level. Like, no duh, like, shit was the same. Sonic doesn't run past the environment as he would in the other Sonic games, having to stop, destroy the bettings, and collect the flickies greatly slowed down Sonic. However, the game might have been greatly improved had a few tweaks been made. For one thing, the fault and the game fell largely on the fact that Sonic had must find and destroy each robot in the level, a requirement not imposed on any previous title in the Sonic series. The fact that there were only five enemies per area also compound the issue of there being a lack of action in the game. Since enemies existed, to serve the purpose of a scavenger hunt rather than a hazard of Sonic. Even if only five enemies could have cookies, there would still have been more than five enemies and the rest would simply not contain cookies. In fact, the very last zone in the game, Panic Puppet Zone, use enemies that don't contain cookies and there are more than five enemies per level section. It It's a wonder why this formula was used throughout the game and there's more where that came from folks a few areas of the game force a play to go very slow such as as Marble Ruin Zone Marble Ruin Zone where Sonic must touch a floor pad that makes him spin like a top while in this stage of spinning like a top the player must very carefully navigate Sonic whose control is much more slippery than before or continue to move even let go of the control, though an obstacle course littered with spikes toward a section of destructible players which can be only be destroyed while spinning as a top, even though spin dashing won't work. If Sonic touches the spike, he gets hit and returns to normal no doubt, like of course that's gonna happen, forcing the player to exercise extreme care while, while controlling Sonic. Not only is player is essentially pushed for Trying to complete these segments quickly, there is no in intensity to do so. For intense, there is no rewind, re reword for completing it quickly, and no time limit. So on Sonic spinning stage, there also is the fact of failing segment, and met segment means you have to backtrack all the way to the for a pet that made Sonic spin like a top and try again from the beginning. Yeah, that's spinning top zone for you. Freaking stupid. I don't, I don't like that stage at all either. But you know, you got to do what you got to do. Sonic 3D Blast has loop de loop I, I had it of Sonic series. But this, mind this game, each loop is instantly a triggered cutscene. Before approaching a loop, the player loses control of Sonic as he automatically charges up in a spin dash for a few seconds before spinning through the entire loop by himself without any player input all loops in the game by the, w by the way Sonic shows spin dashing through it rather than running quite likely due to sprite limitations in fact each loop sequence ends with a pre -sided, preceded by a locked gate that only opens during the loop cutscene Further exaggerating the fact that nothing more than a cutscene, as well as further shattering any sense of natural flaw, flow between loops and the rest of the game. The loops implemented in the such as fashion only serve to establish in players' minds that this was less than a Sonic game. The loops seemingly existed in Sonic 3D Blast clearly because other Sonic titles had them, and no other reason. Yeah, Sonic loops. And there's more other issues of Sonic 3D Blast might include. I have seven minutes to do this, so I have to speed this up. Might include lack of multiplayer, even though Sonic, Sonic, wait, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and Sonic the Hedgehog 
three would be played through the entire league with two players and even had their own versus mode versus mode and the in in ability to play as Tails or Knuckles in the single player, a strong feature of Sonic 3D, Sonic 3D, Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Sonic and Knuckles, and each of the three characters had their own unique abilities to access areas that other couldn't. The lack of Super Super Sonic, thus defeating replay value, and providing no inactivity to collect Chaos Emeralds. No way to save the progress, and yeah, yada yada yada. They're talking about how Sonic fails. The, inst the instruction manual even tells the player to grab their snowboard. When yeah, what game is that? I don't know. That's like the beta version, I guess. And we got a minute left. There's like a paragraph left. Other than these negative, these negative pop points, the game was approached for numbers of reasons. It had good graphics for its time on the Genesis and enhanced Saturn's version as lush and vibrant. The game also very good soundtrack. Both the Genesis and Saturn Genesis and Saturn version have their fans. Saturn's soundtrack was esteemed VGM artist somewhat whatever and some of these from Genesis version would apparently be remixed and used for Sonic Adventure the Sega Saturn. As for for now that's it. I'm not going to read no more, you know, that's some um, details and stuff. The song will change, and I guess I'll see you guys later. And the credits are going to be rolling right now. Well, I'm like, the wiki, the wiki, the game wiki. And yeah, thanks for watching, and peace.